everyone. Thank you for coming to watch. So we got you guys an update on a massive storm system that's moving across the eastern U.S. This is going to be meeting up with a developing nor'easter that's going to bring some major impacts to the northeastern U.S. We're also talking about a huge, huge cold snap that's going to be associated with a very, very strong Arctic blast that's going to be moving down from southwestern Canada into the western U.S., and we're going to be really dealing with some big issues as this could lead to some severe weather and heavy snow. I've got up, I've got the latest information uh, coming right up. So thank you all for coming to watch this video. I uh, got you guys coming at you guys again with a, uh, a second a second video on um, basically our main topic, which is what's going to be happening uh, next week. Um, but starting out here, you can see that we do have a pretty big storm system with a few uh, a few bands of rainfall. It's really just, you know, it's charging right through the eastern U.S. We have a very long line of rain that's stretching all the way towards uh, the Carolinas, up towards the Appalachian Mountains, the, um, the mountainous regions of uh, you know, places like uh, West Virginia, Pennsylvania, Ohio, into the Carolinas, Tennessee, all of that good stuff. And then we also do have a lot of rainfall. Look at all this rainfall and some uh, embed embedded thunderstorms with this. Um, they're on the backside moving right now, rolling through Kentucky and northern Tennessee. That's where the strongest of storms are. I don't think they're going to be severe. We, I, b I believe that we actually do have a marginal risk for severe weather out in this region uh, tomorrow, but, um, I really don't expect much severe weather with that. A pretty big rainfall, a uh, band of rainfall moving right over the Great Lakes. Um, this is just moving out of Milwaukee, so a lot of heavy rainfall moving over that area. So we pretty much have a central low pressure right there. Um, and so basically what the storm setup is, is we're going to have another low pressure system that's starting to form here off the, off the outer banks of North Carolina. That's going to meet up with this system and it's going to move up the coast, pulling in a lot of moisture uh, from the Atlantic Ocean. And so it's going to move kind of like that. Gusty winds coming out of the northwest. We really got to talk about uh, maybe some Halloween decorations really blowing around. It's going to be a hazard. Um, there could be even some limbs down, some trees down, some patchy power outages possible. But you know, a lot of things to worry about with this upcoming system. So we go over to our alerts here. Nothing much at the moment. You can see even for our current storm right now, we don't have any alerts in effect. Um, up here into northern Montana, we, we've been dealing with this for a long time. A lake wind advisory still hanging on to those gusty winds, gusting up to 45, maybe approaching 50 miles an hour. So just make sure that you're while driving with with hazard, uh, with hazard um, as you you know, just you, 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 you move along in your morning and afternoon commute. All right. So could, there could be some relatively large limbs down, maybe even some power outages, but I really don't expect uh, the worst from uh, these winds here. Along the coast of California, we have a heat advisory. It's still hot. Um, it's still warmer than average out here, especially on the coast to the San Francisco area and southwestern California, San Diego, I should say. Los Angeles, you guys have been uh, warmer. Uh, I would say closer to the coastline if you're in that general area. You've probably noticed that it's been a little warmer. That's going to hang on for a few days because you, you've got a heat wave that's starting to move out as we're going to see that cold shot come through. All right. Um, other than that, nothing much. Uh, we do have a special weather statement uh, going out for portions of uh, of Southern Mississippi, but, you know, we're not going to really discuss any of that at the moment. So we go over to, uh, the tropics here. We're looking at, uh, this is Tropical Storm Tammy, but on satellite. So I mentioned Tropical Storm Tammy in a few updates ago, how, well, uh, how we did have a, at that point we had a tropical wave that looked, looked like it was going to develop. Well, here we go. Uh, we finally saw, see some development with Tropical Storm Tammy. All right. And so, Tammy right now is, uh, it's, she's doing pretty good. She's got a lot of moisture, some good circulation with the system, but it's running out of time to, you know, further develop because right here, uh, are the lesser Antilles. All right. And these are really going to slow down this storm system. But if we see these waters continue to warm up and we continue to see a decrease in, in uh, wind shear, then this storm can continue to, uh, develop as it travels kind of through these northern lesser Antilles islands, but 
We're expecting this to become a Category 1 hurricane as it makes landfall. It's pretty much too late for this thing to just move right up north. It has, I would say, there's a small chance that I could just nick some of these islands out here, but it's looking pretty likely that we could see a direct hit on these three islands up here um, from from uh, Tropical Storm Tammy, which, again, will be a Category 1 hurricane when it makes landfall. So a lot of circulation, a lot of good moisture to work with. You see these pinks and these uh, these grays. These are very, very moist uh, conditions in the atmosphere, very high cloud tops. Um, so a lot of thunderstorm buildup. We see a lot of convection going on right here, which means that this is a healthy and growing tropical cyclone. So we go over to our current National Hurricane Center projected path here. So um, we can see in this uh, in our current wind field estimate, we're still at a tropical storm. But as you see, uh, that we're expecting this to continue to move generally in a northwestern uh, direction. But it's very weird is that as this makes landfall in probably the main island of the Lesser Antilles, you actually see this uh, marking as a hurricane. So um, I, I, the waters out here are so warm that this can that they can even support a hurricane when it's not even completely over the water. So um, already we have tropical storm watches going down to this southern island here, even out of the cone. All right, and then we go up to about here where we get inside the cone. That's where the National Hurricane Center marks their uh their uh, tropical storm warning all right and this goes all the way up to the main island up here a little bit uh farther north all right um and this is also where you bump into that hurricane watch all right i personally think we are going to see a hurricane warning pop up somewhere inside uh this pink and this blue be just because usually when you get a hurricane um as as long as it's you know as long as it's strong enough and it's not completely weakening at that point, and it's, and in this case, it's strengthening as it moves into this piece of land. That's usually where you see that tr that hurricane warning. I think we're gonna see one probably for this northern Lesser Antilles Island. I don't know why we don't have a hurricane watch up yet for this tiny piece of this island here, because this is actually gonna be one of the stronger points that this storm makes landfall, but. Uh, we we just gotta hold on to and keep keep watching what the National Hurricane Center says. But we're expecting this storm to continue uh, up uh, farther north into the Southwest Atlantic Ocean, and then right now this is the cone of uncertainty where the National Hurricane Center is predicting that this storm will start to curve out to sea, missing Bermuda. But there has been some uh there has been some slight disagreement on what could happen here, but. The models have been saying that pretty much what they're saying right now is they're thinking that if we get to a point here, all right, if the storm eventually does take this projected path, it can go two ways. It could go, could start curving west, which I don't think we, we would, they would, it would put uh, us at risk, the east coast, at a complete risk, but it could also continue moving east and it could just go completely out to sea. We really don't know. It could bail out or it could start moving towards us. It's going to be for the future. I'm going to keep you guys posted up. I'm going to give you guys, get, get you guys posted on that. All right, but that's just something to consider watching because we are getting to uh, get, getting towards that uh, day four to five um, time frame. And once we get to Tuesday, I think that's when we can really start talking about if we're going to really need to watch this storm closely for our friends in the East Coast. All right, so we look at now the Eastern U.S. We're going to be looking at what we're going to be calling our Nor'easter. So we got a lot of moisture uh, starting to starting to kind of form here, starting to show some thunderstorm activity um, off the coast of Florida, the Carolinas, Georgia here. All right, at the same time, you've got your storm system moving across the Great Lakes. All right. And watch as it happens. So we get into 9 p.m. We see an overnight uh, thunderstorm uh, event here. I wouldn't say obviously not a severe thunderstorm event, but we got thunderstorms rolling right through Ohio, uh, mainly uh, eastern Ohio. We see a lot of thunderstorms moving through um, part, portions of southeastern Indiana into central and northern Kentucky. All right, Th this storm is going to continue pushing off to the uh off to the east and at the same time you see a lot of uh moisture and a lot of thunderstorm rain starting to build up across uh over the coast and so this uh low pressure system here is going to weaken pretty dramatically as this low pressure system starts to strengthen okay and though and so we at this point i guess we could we could definitely switch back 
we can switch to the northeastern U.S. to get a little bit of a closer look at things. All right, and so we see here this is a 996 millibar storm system. And as this number, <coughs> excuse me, as this number gets higher, that's the weaker the low pressure is. All right. And so all this, all that's left with this, that is, you could call it major, is just this line of thunderstorms and, and this line of heavy rainfall. All right. So we're getting to we're getting to tomorrow. This is going to be the scene as we get into tomorrow night. So this is 7 p.m. tomorrow. Okay, this is Friday. We have very, very heavy rain, a huge pocket of rainfall, uh, which is our nor'easter right here. This is still just pulling. It's grabbing all the moisture that's left up here in the Atlantic, and it's about to fling it right into the coastline. At the same time, it's meeting up with this trough here, all right? And it's really going to cause some problems. And so... This trough uh, goes from a 996 millibar uh, storm system now to um, almost nothing. And now this uh, storm system completely takes it over, all right? And so pretty much the transition from Friday into uh, Friday into Saturday is when we're going to start seeing that rainfall into uh, areas closer to the coastline on the northeast. I know some of you guys in the interior northeast, like upstate New York, central and western PA into uh, the mountains of West Virginia, um, uh, Virginia, and then North Carolina. All you guys will start seeing that rain a little bit earlier, so around the 7 p.m. time frame. Just some spotty showers, um, and other than that, just a very cloudy day in general tomorrow for the uh, for the northeast, but uh, we see some gr a group of some thunderstorms uh, moving over New Jersey into Long Island. We're getting to we're getting to Friday. This is 10 a.m. Friday, so tomorrow morning we could be waking up to some I wouldn't say intense, but some pretty good thunderstorms moving over um, the Mid Atlantic and Southern New England. So this is going to be moving right through New York City um, into Northern New Jersey, Southern New York, uh, Southern New York State into. Uh, Connecticut, so Hartford, Connecticut, all of you guys getting hit pretty hard tomorrow morning. That's going to be, it's going to put some travel hazards on there, so you really, the morning commute might be a little slow, which might be annoying, getting a, you know, getting up on Friday, going to work for the last day of the week, you know, it may, it may be a little slow, but that's going to be just the first initial taste of rainfall. Then the big event comes in, all right, and so we start to see a lot of heavy rainfall moving through Long Island again. We see a, that trough still pushing off to the east. More rainfall coming up from the south. The heaviest rainfall still off to off to the east. And so, if this came on shore, I mean, I, I think you guys, all of you guys, would know how bad that would be. That would be another crazy flooding threat. But it's pretty much too late for that to be changed completely. But it could shift a little bit farther west, um, creating a flood, a higher flooding threat for the coast. All right, but for now, what we've got is we've got just a lot of spotty showers, thunderstorms, and heavy rainfall. Pretty much just scattered pockets of that in and out through the day. We're getting to Saturday. This is probably when you're going to be calling it the, I, I don't know what, we're up to seventh wet weekend in a row for New York City. It's crazy, guys. It's been so wet here on the weekends. It's been really unlucky, but the storm system continues pushing to the north. It's still starting to generate some more thunderstorms, some more uh, pockets of rainfall as it moves through the northeast. We're going to get rotating bands with this, all right? So another band of rainfall could move through on the back side of this, putting some showers um, into these areas that just got soaked, all right? And if you're in southeastern Canada, I know there's this is a pretty populated area here. There's going to be a pretty good chance for some backside snow, so a few inches of snow possible, but the ground's probably going to be saturated and wet, so it's probably not going to stick. But there is definitely a chance for some snow, probably one to two inches um, is possible. So we look at now our current, uh, this, these, I mean, these are wind speeds uh, projected by the NAM 12KM model. All right, so we're going to be looking at the full uh, the full 84 hours, just looking at, you know, what we could expect with our wind gusts because we are going to get strong winds. Um, I shouldn't even say wind gusts because we're actually talking about just regular wind speeds. And this is in knots. So knots is pretty much around 8 miles an hour uh, lower than uh it's pretty much it's pretty much eight miles an hour low, low, lower than miles per hour if you want to put it that way so 
uh, let's say you have uh, winds blowing at around 20 knots, then you have winds probably blowing at around 28 to 30 miles per hour. So that's how we're going to be working here. So as we see the storm system moving over the Great Lakes, obviously as the water as the water's flat, that, that means that the wind can push along the water um, and it can be stronger and it won't be blocked by any trees or buildings or stuff. All right, and as this storm system still brews off the coast, we see a lot of strong onshore winds. These are persistent winds. Uh, you can see pretty much all of the northeast uh, blowing. Pretty, It's pretty breezy. Um, pretty much seeing steady winds at around 15 miles an hour in those blues. All right, and so this is where, this is where your storm comes up. All right, we're getting into Saturday. All right, so by the time we get to Saturday, it's going to be raining. And most of you guys are going to be thinking like, okay, so the winds aren't going to be bad with the system. It's just kind of the rainfall. Well, that's not true. The winds just haven't really started getting up right. All right, because these winds are still offshore. These strong winds are still offshore. And they kind of get a little bit jumbled up and messed up as they uh, travel pretty much halfway between uh, pretty much halfway around this low pressure system. But as this, as they continue over the Northeast and then start coming out of the Northwest, that's where they get strong again. And that's how you're going to see, all right, those really strong winds. And so that's going to take some time. Those winds are going to take some time to get all the way around the low pressure center. And that's why those winds are going to come later. All right, but watch these lines. As these lines get straightened out a little bit more and they're closer together, that signifies uh, stronger and more uh, packed together winds and wind streams. And we see off the coast, very strong winds. I mean, these are these are just regular winds. You know, when you see these oranges, that's 30, that's 30 knots, 36 knots. That's around 40 miles an hour for just your sustained winds. That's, that's pretty strong. And we even see these winds getting dangerously close to the south shore of Long Island into the coastal regions of New Jersey. So we're talking most likely gusts 40 to 50 miles an hour for those coastal regions. And man, look at this, just gusty conditions out there um, really along the coast. And I mean, you can see right here, we're getting into 8 p.m. Sunday. So we're getting into Sunday night. Look at all these, you know, the, the you can see these wind currents right here, these wind streams, very close together, very tightly packed, very organized system right here. And you see these very strong winds uh, just offshore, and some even will definitely uh, move onshore, creating some uh, some some hazards. All right, and so that's that's what that's going to be what you're going to have to expect for these winds uh, with this system. And so that's going to be definitely going to be a troublemaker for um, our morning commute. Um, uh, pretty much anywhere, pretty much from Friday to Sunday. You start out Friday and Saturday with some heavy rainfall, maybe some thunderstorms mixed in there. And then starting Saturday night, late Saturday night into Sunday, that's when we start talking about really, really gusty winds. We're talking 35 to 40, maybe even up to 50 miles an hour. All right. And so we move on now to our current uh, projected temperature outlook. So we're talking about a pattern change that we've that many of us in the YouTube weather community have been monitoring. All right. And so we can already see that the uh, the uh, Climate Prediction Center has t taken note of this. They've already issued a uh, what is this? A 70 to 80 percent chance of below average temperatures for northern Montana into western North Dakota. This is going to change. This is just going to get higher and higher, that chance for seeing below average temperatures. And this is already including, <coughs> this is pretty much including that, I wouldn't say exact area, but that pretty, that general area that we're expecting to fall pretty low below our uh, average temperatures. And the eastern U.S. is just baking right now, especially the southeast. We see an above average spot right here just stalled out. 60 to 70, 70 to 80 percent chance of seeing above average temperatures for all of the southeast, including all the way up towards the northeast, mid Atlantic, just the eastern U.S. in general, all seeing above average temperatures. We're talking, you know, 60 mid 60s into the, some of you guys in the 70s. If you're in the southeast, most likely getting up to 80 degrees. So it's going to be actually pretty nice um, as we get uh, into. Um, as we get into next week. So this is, again, this is after the nor'easter. That's why I'm saying this is nice. I'm not, not, this is not for the nor'easter. This was just issued today, um, but this is valid for the 25th to the 29th. So we've got a lot of time to get here. But 
At this point, we're expecting near normal uh, average temperatures here um, in the southwest, still on the coast of California, still seeing above average temperatures, barely hanging on, though. This is going to change to below average pretty soon. So this is going to change as we get closer and closer, but this is going to pro- most likely intensify both your above and below average temperatures that you see right here. So we go over to our uh, our 12Z GFS model looking at our current uh, projected temperature. So we're talking about that major cold snap that's and that cold front that's going to be coming down from Canada. I've been uh, mentioning that in my past update a lot. And so here we go now t- talking about it again. So let's put it all the way to, let's put it to Saturday. All right. So we're getting into Saturday. Let's get it to midday Saturday. So pretty much all of the Western U.S. in general is in a pretty good spot with above average temperatures. Uh, the Eastern U.S. is relatively in a below average temperature, although if you're on the coast, you might be a little warmer. Well, we went way too far out with that. All right, and so notice how we see some uh, some patchy areas of some cooler temperatures snaking their way down through Canada. We're getting below freezing here in uh, in portions of southwestern Canada. All right, and so now we see the northwestern U.S. all of a sudden really starting to get cool there, and so We start to see a little bit of a ridge start forming here in the southern U.S. We see widespread 90s, probably lower 90s to the mid-90s, a lot of you guys in the 80s. Northern U.S. actually receiving above average temperatures still, so that could help weaken this cold front slightly. But then the big cold front, this this is the heart of that cold front begins to really move through. You can see up here, we're starting to get those extreme cold temperatures already by Sunday. And this is just going to continue and continue moving its way down farther south. And boom, right here, we get into Montana. Now we're receiving uh, temperatures down below freezing, all right? And so this is just going to continue spreading and spreading. And maybe even a cold, I mean, this cold front could take over all of Canada. That's how big this could be. And we actually see a cold front, I mean, with this, I mean, with these cold temperatures, and this just continues moving south. All right, and let's say the northern U.S. ends up all being at around, you know, 30 to 40 degrees. We could actually see some major snowstorms uh, that could trek across the northern U.S. in general, and even the northeastern U.S., some places up there. If it's cold enough, we could actually get some snow. So this could be, I mean, this could be a really, a first taste of winter, right? I think this could be really our first, uh, I don't know what's going on there, our first, um, my first big, uh, big cold, uh, cold snapping, uh, polar vortex here. And so, uh, we, we, we get to, uh, Tuesday. This is Tuesday, the 24th. All right. So we're getting into that time frame that we saw on the, uh, climate prediction center. And this, this cold, uh, temperature is still snakes its way down. Now we see Montana. Look at this Montana place in Montana getting down to zero, near zero degrees up towards Canada, we could get below zero degrees, and even for just the northwestern U.S. in general, a lot of areas getting below 32 degrees, and this is just going to get more common more and more common as we get into late next week. We get into Friday. All right, look at this. Negative two degrees, negative three degrees out here in northwestern uh, Wyoming, western Montana, hanging around zero degrees. All right, this is pretty far out. This is still... I mean, this isn't over 200 hours out, but this is still around 188 hours out, 186 hours out. So this is very far out. So this could change. But what this tells you is that there is a huge signal for something big and something major that could lead to huge problems sometime around the 24th to the tw- to the 30th of October. And so we just see this cold front continue to spread here. You could even see the cold front marked here. We see a very as uh, this, this is what we call what we call a cold snap. For example, here in Kansas, you're hanging around 65 degrees, and all of a sudden you're in the 50s. All right, and so uh, when you have a lot of surging moisture that's coming up from the Gulf, what like which we're gonna see here, all right, in front of it, and you also get that warm air, and then very cold and dry air coming down from this from the northwest. That's that typical ingredient and uh, just set up for severe weather. And so we just see this cold continue to intensify and continue to snap as it moves its way down towards the northern U.S. And this is just going to continue getting worse and worse, going to continue spreading. 
and the GFS wants uh, potentially below freezing temperatures all the way down to northern New Mexico. All right, so we could, I mean, a few, a uh, few um, runs ago, a few model runs ago, the GFS wanted snow in northern Texas and and uh, around freezing temperatures in northern Texas. Uh, do not go and tell your family and friends that Mr. Storm on YouTube just said that we're going to get snow in northern Texas and we're going to see temperatures at around 32 degrees. I did not say that. I just said a few runs ago the GFS was showing that, right? 288 hours out. It's too far out, and that's pretty much a crazy scenario that most of us should know is most likely not going to happen. But, I mean, that shows that this could be this could be such a big deal that we could actually be considering that slightly as a possibility. But we really see what this what the latest GFS shows that this could do. Uh, notice the northeastern U.S. really getting cooled down here. Um, this would be midday Wednesday of like a uh, week and a few days out. All right, look at this. We're getting all the way down to the to the 20s. This is your midday temperature. This is when you see 12Z here. That's from noon to like five. I think noon to 5 p.m. or something. Right? A little bit even. Yeah, noon to around 5 p.m. That's your that's your uh, 12Z time frame. All right, and so if we actually saw that. Then I mean it could be like thirty degrees uh in into central in a place like central New York twenty seven degrees I mean that is that's pretty crazy and that's that I mean that's what a a polar um I wouldn't even say that it, just a a cold front in general that's what it does and this could really just take over this could be a Arctic air invasion and this could take over much of the northern U S and so we get we put this all the way out and we could even have the GFS is hinting that we could have temperatures getting all the way down to the 20s, all the way towards the coast of the Northeast. And, I mean, this could really be our first major cold cold snap. And if this lasts long enough, we could actually end up having a, I mean, I don't know what you, I don't I wouldn't even really want to say this, but some sort of a early winter arrival. I mean, it's obviously not going to last that long. We're still hanging on to warm temperatures in the South, but, this could get us off to a kickstart of our uh, typical winter pattern, and also we're going to see what what it does with El Nino. So we look at uh, the GFS model. This is the 12Z GFS. I believe the 18Z just came out, so we'll run through this real quick to see what the 18Z is, is saying. I actually haven't looked at this yet. All right, so what does the 18Z say? Um, the 18Z shows a a big system developing uh, in the northwestern U.S., as well as, uh, yet again, another potential severe weather event for the south, and we see just, you know, another potential storm system. And so I want to take a look back at the 12Z here, um, which I thought was very concerning and very interesting. So what the 12Z is showing, it's showing a big ridge uh, pulling up around the, uh, the the west central U.S., all right, if you want to put it that way, and high pressure guarding the eastern U.S., um, 1,022 millibars. Um, but here comes a storm system that's starting to, to develop as your cold front starts to move south, uh, blocking that ridge. And so to, when, when that cold air and that ridge, they press together, a strong ridge and a very strong cold front, as you, as you, as you know. Uh, when they press together, that's going to cause tension in the atmosphere, and boom, this is what you get. Uh, you can already tell that we've got a pretty big and major storm storm system developing and brewing in the northwestern U.S. based off this run. All right, this is the 25th. This is uh, six days out, around 156 hours out, so pretty a decent amount of time uh, that we have to, to, to monitor this. But this is... This is going to be something that we're going to be talking about for the rest of this week into early next week. And boom, look at all of this snow falling over the northwestern U.S. Just because, you know, we're getting near zero degrees if we actually do get a cold front that strong. And at the same time, the GFS is hinting, um, I mean, this is consecutive runs that are hinting a setup that would favor a some sort of a severe weather outbreak in the south. And so... Yeah, that's really not good, and this is we're getting into our our second uh our second our secondary season of severe weather. So if we do get a dynamic storm system like this one that could actually form here, we could be talking about another major severe weather event. And boom, look at this huge, huge storm system stretching all the way from south uh, southwestern Iowa down towards 
Central Texas associated with this massive system. Look at this. This is like, this is taking me back to like Winter Storm Elliot, for example. I mean, we had, we just got a huge system of the GFS is showing. And this is, I mean, this is pretty, it's pretty crazy um, to show 160 hours out. This is, I mean, this is seven days out. So this is exactly a week out. Um, but man, this is a big system, a blockbuster system. So a lot of snow on the backside that the GFS is showing. A lot of rain, thunderstorms, severe thunderstorms on the front. And man, that's just a major system. And look at all that rain that could be falling over the north central U.S. We really don't know for sure what's going to happen, but maybe even nasty winter storm for portions of southern Canada. But I mean, man, that was that was pretty impressive what the GFS just showed. And I've I've been looking at that just kind of just you know taking notes on what you know you know what the storm system that the GFS is showing has been looking like. All right. Uh, but this is not certain information. We're gonna have to watch this still. Um, but I think that if we're if we're, if we're consecutively now seeing uh, consecutive runs showing a storm system exceeding uh, this amount of strength, then that's gonna be a big problem. That's gonna be something that we're really gonna have to watch for the rest of this week into next week. And so, anything behind it? Well, a few here and there, a few storm systems, maybe a small clipper that could deliver some snow for the mountains of northeastern u.s excuse me all right i mean this is 294 hours out this is all the way out towards halloween which is i don't know this is something like 10 days out 11 days out so uh 12 days out i think that's what it is um but man it's just i don't know it's gonna be wild i mean i'm telling you guys this is going to be a wild end to october and so you know we see what the rest of this run says maybe another system that could develop but we really just don't know what's going to happen for sure so that's all i got for you guys thank you so much for coming to watch i'll see you guys in the next video so gotta continue watching this system it's going to be very very big so something that we're really going to have to pay pay attention to that big cold snap a lot of big things on the way i'm afraid that this could really lead to problems some of these storm systems but I'm going to make sure that I got you guys all covered on whatever is going to be happening weather-wise across the United States. So thank you all for coming to watch. I'll see you guys in the next video.